good day. It's uh, Leif Wellhaven reinvention with Leif Wellhaven. Actually, we've got a great guest in the house today. My good friend William Henry with Be Better World. We're going to talk about reinventing and how he's reinvented himself, his businesses, his message, his family, uh, and you're going to be totally inspired. I got a preview of this thing already, and you're going to just going to totally dig this guy. His message is on point. Uh, he's inspiring. He's empowering, and, and he's going to talk about how he's done all that taking those experiences he has had in life and really enact that into uh, going forward into 2021. So William, let's start off with, I'd like to just, you know, without saying, tell me about yourself, <laughs> I would like to know kind of what was happening in your life maybe five, 10 years ago. Where were you personally, professionally, that type of thing? Yeah, so for, I'll back up 20 years and I, I worked for uh, one of the bigger healthcare companies in the, in the country and I did that and uh, it was interesting because about three years ago, I got an ultimatum. And the mm -hmm. ultimatum was either you can do this or that. And I chose to do that. And here we are now, three years later, with my own shingle. Yeah, no, they, when, when people give get backed into a corner or given an ultimatum, it, uh, sometimes that can be tough to deal with. And it's, but at the same time, I know for me, it felt very empowering to go and start my own business. Was yeah. that for you? Yeah, it was. And, I, you know, I, I first thought I was going to be upset, right? Because like, it feels like rejection. Sure. But I never really felt that. I had this overwhelming peace, mm -hmm. which was kind of funny, right? I had this overwhelming peace, and then uh, three days later, somebody offered me another job, which was kind of crazy in itself. But, right. yeah, it was, it was, it was, I'm, I'm happy. I tell people all the time, it afforded me to have a family and move to four different states and do a lot of cool things. So I have no beef with that opportunity. Right, right. But you felt at peace about it because it was probably, it was time. Yeah. Right? Sure. Just thought timing was perfect. Yeah. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. Awesome. So you left the corporate world, you start your own business. So tell us, what is when somebody says, I'm sure you get it all the time, you're on an elevator, you're at a, you're at a conference, you're, you're out to dinner with your wife. William, what is Be Better World? There you go. Oh, man, that's, that's a loaded question, but I'll try to answer this as succinctly as I can. So Be Better World started as an anti-bullying program, and we started in one city, okay. and we wanted to ensure that uh, we were taking care of the youth. That was our big deal. And so now it's spanned to seven cities, four states, and we have some national recognition. So it's, it's going well. Curly can't complain about it. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. So, what, so what was the motivation? I mean, obviously, we all... Uh, everybody, I think, has a passion for not seeing kids be bullied. And we know kids can be cruel. And I, I see it all the time, not just in kids. I, I see it in adults that, that want to get their way and they're pushy and they're, they're just difficult to deal with. And so I sit there and think, well, if you were a bully as a child, <laughs> you're probably going to grow up and be a bully as an adult. So it's great that you start kind of start young, right? You yeah, got to get in there. Absolutely. I think the thing for me was opposite, though. I wanted to see kids be self-empowered and have that ability to be resilient in tough situations. So coaching sports, I used to see it a lot. So kids come in and the parents are trying to cover for them. Well, little Johnny can't do this and little Johnny can't do that. I'm like, go sit down. We'll figure it out, right? Sure. Because um, I figured out a long time ago, if you set the bar, kids will raise to it. Right. It's, it's us parents who are scared of the bar. Kids are not. And so the program was based around, although we said anti-bullying because it was catchy, Sure. Right. It was really about self-empowering and resilience. So that's what oh, wow. we teach. Wow. And that is difficult, especially because I mean, kids have a lot going on, right? I mean, <laughs> they're going through lots of body changes, hormone changes. It's, they have a lot of peer pressure. I mean, there's just so many things. There's high expectations in the classroom, high expectations on the gym floor or out on the field, mm -hmm. all these different things uh, that they've got to achieve and set the bar up. And so that's, that is great. I love, that. I love that you talk about that. So we were just talking, so when you go into these schools and you're talking about anti-bullying, mm -hmm. what does that look like? What's the intro into the school and then what happens kind of on the follow-up, the backside when you're going back to these schools over and over? So what I try to tell schools and administrators is that this program can't be the one-stop shop. And what I mean by that is people will come in and say, hey, come in my school and stop bullying. And I'm like, wait a minute, you couldn't stop right. it in years. You want me to stop it in one visit? Right. So I tell them it's like a gym plan. And I, and I know you can relate to this. You go to the gym once, you feel it. You go, to mm -hmm. the gym, you go to the gym sustained amount of time, you start to see results. Right. And so I try to create a relationship with not only with the school administrators, with the students and the parents, because you wow. need that triangle relationship. Sure. So yeah. that's what we do. Oh, man, I love it. That is awesome. The, um, I know that uh, obviously that was a big pivot. A big, a big reinvention was you shifting from the corporate world to running your own business. I know how it was when I left my, my big job. I was like, I tell people this all the time. I'm not sure people really believe me, but I went through a phase of like, span of 15 years where I didn't even drive my own car. I was always driving like a company car, a company rig. And I was like, 
guys, I, I, I was getting spoiled to that, and I, I kind of enjoyed the benefits, and I was a good employee. I showed up early, I stayed late, but there was something empowering about when I finally decided to start my own business. You know, of course, I call it the, the pucker factor, meaning like, oh gosh, <laughs> the good news is it's all up to me. The bad news is it's all up to me, right? So did you go through any type of those, you know, self-doubt? I mean, you know, I know you said you were at peace, but at the same time, you're like, man, I got a, I got a wife, I got a kid, I got a family. I don't have that that's paycheck coming in. How does that how does that roll at the house? Oh, for sure. I mean, I, I think in, if somebody tells you that they started a business and they didn't go through that, I think you should reassess who you're talking to. Right? <laughs> um, it's it's tough, right? I mean, it's tough, and I tell people all the time: just be ready for the obstacles because they're coming, right? And even with a, a little bit more mature business, I still worry about those things. But that's the thing that keeps me going and keeps me motivated. Awesome. Well, I love the motivation. So I talk about this a lot, and you've probably heard me talk about it, and I know you go through this or went through this or maybe still do, but what is, I always like to go back to the why. Why do we do what we do? Why do we get up in the morning and you know, shave our face, get dressed, go to work, whatever, start a career, have a family, build a church, get our finances in order? Why do we do what it is that we do? So for my question to you is what was your why? Why did you really like, okay, I'm not gonna go with you blood service, I'm gonna stay here what is your why? What drives you every day? Yeah, so I think it twofold. Firstly, is my family, right? I didn't want to uproot my family. My daughter is a freshman in high school now. Sure. Um, I could see coming that she's had a steady set of friends. I didn't want to uproot her from that. And then it was my extended family. I had a really, really cool extended family. And I'm talking about all the kids I've coached, all the parents mm -hmm. that I've met. I didn't want to leave that, especially right, right there when they made the ultimatum. So I was just, hey, we'll figure it out. Love it. We'll figure it out. We'll figure it out. Yeah. Once you make the decision, I would say, uh, you know, once the, if the why is big enough, the how doesn't matter. You just you figure out those roadblocks that are coming up, and you just hurdle them and keep on rolling. So uh, you started this anti-bullying campaign. Kind of goes back to that self empowerment and and different things. So uh, we talked about how that what that looks like, and I know you you kind of use this acronym called CCRABS. Yeah. So explain that to me a little bit. Tell the audience about that. Yeah, so when I first got into this, I was like, you know, people don't really remember speeches or assemblies or those kind of things, but people tend to remember acronyms. So so it's really crabs with another C because I can't spell that well, <laughs> right? And I had more to say than crabs would allow me to. So the, the acronym stands for clarity, confidence, resiliency, advocacy, and then bullying stops. That's what it stands for. Wow. So that was the idea behind it. I love it. I love it. That's awesome. Okay, uh, another question I had for you. So you talk about your, your family, you talk about your, your daughter, your, your wife, the extended family. So, but I don't want to assume anything. Mm -hmm. What would you say, you know, who was your support system? Because there were some roadblocks, there were some hurdles, there were some self-doubt. There's probably some even people maybe at the last company you worked for or even some friends uh, that maybe don't necessarily want to see you succeed or struggle with it. So who, who could you count on? Who was that support system for you? So I'm, a, I'm a man of faith. Right? So I've always believed in God. And, and like I said, I've been guided by that for as long as I can remember. And I knew if I kept my faith in that, that I'll be fine. And, you know, my family was there cheering me on, my extended family was there cheering me on. So my support system is really strong and I'm appreciative to all those people who are part of wow. it. Wow, yeah. gosh, that is, that is awesome. We can all take a, a lesson in that for sure. Um, so let's talk about that constant support. I mean, what does that look like going forward? So they're, they're there for you in your corner and you're out there uh, traveling and you're giving this, this anti-bullying uh, campaign to these, to these companies and to these schools and to these children. Uh, what's, what, what happens like kind of on a constant basis with support? So, so for me, what support is, you know, again, you know, staying strong and staying centered, centered in my faith. And I always say this, just being authentic to myself. Right. That's so important. Like I, I've gotten to the point now where I will not do work that doesn't feel good. Sure. You know, at some point in your career, I mean, maybe you haven't had to do this, but you had to chase a check. Oh, yeah. Right. Absolutely. And so I've done that. And I'm not saying I won't do it again, but I feel good about right now. I don't have to do that. Right. So, you can be selective who you want to work with, and who your goals align with. I talked yes. about that. That always that always feels better when you're on the same page with people. Right. Yep. So I know you do a lot of uh, public speaking, not just not just in schools, but I know you're going to be one of the keynote or the lead speakers, the top speakers with uh, TEDx Billings, which has been moved around a couple times because of COVID. Yep. But uh, we're thrilled to have you on that uh, speaking docket. I'm not one. Of, I'm not one of the top speakers, but I, I, I'm in there, which is which is thrilling. Uh, what, what's, give us a hint on what that topic could look like for you. Yeah, so um, when I was asked to speak uh, to TEDx, we were literally about to go through the whole COVID thing. We were like maybe right at the, at the precipice of it. 
And I do this workshop and in there's an acronym roadblocks, right? And how to remove roadblocks. And I think it's, it's definitely one of those things that you can look at now and use for the rest of your career. Wow. So roadblocks as an acronym is what I was going to speak about. Awesome. That is great. Yeah. No. So for those of you that don't know, so TEDx was going to be in February, then it was moved to May, and now it looks like it's going to be in the spring of 2022 just to keep everybody safe and COVID free. So look for that. Look for William and all the other great speakers that are going to be there. Look for you. How about that? Ooh, yeah. yeah, look for you. I'm pumped. No, I, I, I have to admit, I was like, when I first got that call and got the golden ticket from Devon, I, I, was, I, I was really thrilled. I just felt like it was a, a personal accomplishment. But more importantly, now I get to go and share uh, my experience and my influence with others, right? So Absolutely. That's an empowering yeah. thing. Yes. So I know you have your own, you have your own talk show, your own podcast I do. called The Chop Shop, which I love, I love the name. Yeah. How'd that come about? So, uh, you know, it's hard to connect to your audience all the time. And I was trying to find a medium that I could, uh, you know, they can go back and they can listen to. I try to keep my podcast fairly short because I want it to be a car drive in. So, oh, sure. Right. Sure, sure. Um, and thank you for being on it last week. Oh, my actually. gosh. I was thrilled. Right. Um, so that came about like that because people were asking me for more and they wanted a, a diverse uh, audience. I have a diverse audience. so I wanted them to be able to expose them to some of the beauties of our community. And, and it's worked out. We were on episode 27, I think. Wow. Yeah, I love it. No, yeah. I, I, I thought the production was great. I thought the, it was just easy, it felt, felt comfortable, and I, I felt empowered leaving there. So uh, obviously, hopefully the listeners feel the same way, right? I, I, hearing you, I'm sure they will. Yeah, listen to you. Listen <laughs> to you. Um, so we talked about the podcast. We talked about uh, uh, Be Better World. I know you also do some work with youth with regards to, to basketball tournaments and things like that. So talk about that for a second. I thought that was really cool. Yeah, so we started Big Sky Balling in 2012. Um, and we started on I – was, I was just uh, – I was too stubborn not to have a, the biggest basketball tournament in the state, right? Um, so prior to me getting here, there was a big tournament called Rock the Rims. Okay. And I heard that it had died. And then I went to Bozeman and they had a fairly big tournament. I'm like, where's Billings? So 88 days later, we put together our first one in 2012. We had, I don't know, 60 teams. And I think we've topped out in the last couple of years at about 200 teams in this summer. Oh home. my gosh. So it's, it's, it's a good time. It's normally really, really hot because we do it in August right? on right. the black top. So yeah, it's a good time. But good that's time. unique because instead of just being in the gym in the winter, get outside. Absolutely. Kids probably love it. Oh, adults love it too because they don't have to be out there all day like me. Right, right. <laughs> <laughs> Oh man, I totally <laughs> dig it. I totally dig it. So I know you've got uh, you've got the TEDx thing going on. You've got the Chop Shop. You've got the Big Sky Balling. You've got Be Better World. <laughs> um, anything? Maybe maybe a, a sneak a peek. I know you got always got something cooking, but maybe something that you've been wanting to do that might be something that you might explore going going forward. Yeah. So big thing that just happened uh, last month. We just did a diversity and inclusion training here in Billings, Montana, and that's pretty uh, near and dear to my heart just because. Uh, just the climate of the country right now. So mm -hmm. um, more to come on that. It's got, we got a four part series coming out on that. So just working. So that was a collaboration with you and the Chamber of Commerce. Yes. And I saw that, uh, could people get like some kind of continuing ed credits on that? They could, they could. So um, we got the program approved by the Society of Human Resource Management. So if you came to the uh, conference, you got three and a half CEUs for that. Nice. The next nice. program coming out is a, actually a 10 hour program. Um, broken into two and a half hour sections, and you can get, I believe, eight and a half, nine CEUs on that one as wow. well. Wow. And so you did that all over Zoom, I'm assuming? It's no. All virtual. no. You did it in person? We did it in person. Nice. Yeah, so um, we did it. It was kind of cool. Um, you know, some of, the, some of the standards got lifted about two weeks oh, before we came out. Timing. Good timing. Yeah, so we were able to spread out and do some things. I just think it's way more effective to do it that way. Sure, so sure. So we were lucky. Yeah, so give us a, a snapshot of that. So obviously, like you said, diversity inclusion is a hot topic. And we all want to be more progressive. We all, all want to be more inclusive. And I know, even for myself, I, I've, I've never considered myself a racist or prejudiced person. But I, I've always caught myself saying different words. Uh, I'll give you an example of one. As, as I was growing up, it used to be okay to say a word like retarded. Mm -hmm. That's not cool. You don't say those kinds of words anymore. Mm -hmm. and, and I'm just picking on one word. Yeah. And, and, but I, I find myself at times whether it just maybe it's how I was raised or the culture I was in, the family I grew up in or the people I've been around um, that will say different things or just believe different things. And I think they don't even realize that they're saying it, but they're not as inclusive as they should be. They're not as diversified. And so obviously we don't have a huge diversity of, <laughs> of races and billings and, uh, and different things. So how, how does somebody really open up their mind, open up their ears, open up their, 
their soul and really go, gosh, you know, I, this, these are some areas I could be better at, not only for myself, but for my family, my business, my church, et cetera. So one of the things you said earlier is there's a huge difference between racism and prejudice, right? And I think those words get thrown around equally, but they're not. So mm-hmm. prejudice, we all have. We all have, right? We walk into a room, everybody's dressed a certain way, we're not dressed a certain way. That's prejudice, right? Mm-hmm. I feel a certain way about that, sure, right? Sure. Those things we can talk away. Racism is totally different, and you and I can have an adult beverage and talk about what that means. But So I tell people all the time, it's okay to be prejudiced, right. but understand your prejudices so that you don't take it into making an evaluation of a person. That's the difference. Mm, that's powerful. Right? Oh, yeah, yeah, really good. So. Yeah. No, and I think that's, uh, I, I love that you're collaborating with the chamber and putting that together. So you said this will be a, just the beginning yeah. of what is more to come. Yeah, absolutely. Awesome. awesome. Coming down the pipe probably in the next uh, month or so, like I said. Well, well I, know it, I know it's sold out, it, right? It did sell out. It did sell out. So, so that tells you right there that people <laughs> want the information. Yeah. They, yeah. Want, they want to learn. They, everybody, we're all open to change, I think, in today's, today's day and age. And so that's, that's pretty cool. Yeah. So but tell us, and we, you were talking about your daughter and your, and your wife. And so how, how is your family doing right now? What's going on in your, in the, at the, you know, on the homestead as far as kind of looking forward to 2021? You know, my family is good, right? I mean, like I said, and, and, and I can't state this enough. We, we know some, we know and are exposed to some really, really good people. Mm-hmm. And so given that, you know, we tend not to struggle in some of the areas that we see others struggle in. However, the struggle is real. I'm sure. For <laughs> the struggle sure. is real. Yeah. And I think the fact that um, our community is stepping up and trying to talk about the struggle, I think it makes it that more, it that much more important, right? Right. And so I've been a big believer my entire life. If you're not part of the solution, you're part of the problem. problem. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. we want to be a part of the solution. Well, in our state, is a typically a, a, a Republican, conservative type state. But I think... Uh, you know, for myself, I, I tend to lean a little more that way just because I was brought up as a Christian. Yeah. But I also am a very tolerant, inclusive, inclusive person. And I think it seems like people are are kind of, you know, coming back to that, getting centered. And I always hate seeing all the things we've seen lately with regards to politics because it's it's been like the divided uh, states of America versus the, the united states of America. So if somebody said to you, William, they say, gosh, you're, you're, a, you're a speaker, you're a motivator, you're a coach. You're a, you're a Christian, you're a family guy. What is something I can do at my level in little old Billings, Montana, or wherever I live, America, where I can really make a difference, <clears throat> reinvent myself and become a better, a better version of me? What, what would you, advice would you give somebody? So I would say just be open. Be open and be graceful. Those are the two things that I think get missed a lot. So I tell people all the time, it's not my job to change your mind. It's my job to help you open your mind so that you can make an informed decision. That's first. And then have grace, right? Because here's the deal. We only know what we know. I've had the opportunity to live in seven states. I've been in 47 of the 50, so I've seen a lot of things. Sure. If you've only been in Montana and, you know, for 50 years, you haven't seen the things I've seen. So I'm going to afford you some grace and understand that you haven't had the same experiences. Mm-hmm. And I think likewise, you got to afford the person grace as well. So that would be the two things I would say. Be open and have grace, because, like you said, it's just being open to another, another, uh, to somebody's way of thinking. It's, but for some reason, and social media is probably as a big a <laughs> proponent of as, as well as everybody has a voice, and so we feel like it's our voice or our, our job, our goal, our, you know, way of life. We want to change somebody's mind, and that that that's what happens, and that's where the, the arguments and the opinions, and then people take it personal, and then it just, it just gets crazy, right? Absolutely. And so I love the fact that you say just be, just be open. Yeah. Because somebody else might have a perspective. You may not change your mind, but you can appreciate Absolutely. how they feel. Absolutely. I always say two intelligent people can agree to disagree, and we can walk away and still be okay. Wow. So when you walk away and you're mad, I, one of two things can happen. I didn't express myself clearly enough, or you're not open enough to the conversation, and you get to decide which one those are. Sure. Right. Wow. Yeah. But yeah, people all of a sudden, you know, it's it's like they're on the fight, like right away, just instead of just like you said, affording people grace. I, lo- I love that piece because we don't know what other people have been through. You don't know what you don't know, and so I always say, yeah, you know, teach me. Uh, I want to be open. I want to learn. I want to make good, informed decisions for myself and my family. And I I, I love that word. Grace, gosh, you you got a lot of these nuggets that just flow off <laughs> no, the tongue, I man. I don't know about that. <laughs> awesome, awesome stuff. So, uh, I always like to ask people this: hmm? What is what's next? You know, everybody everybody always wants to have something to look forward to. What's next for 
big sky balling. What's what's next for Be Better? What's next for William Henry? What's next for the Henry family? Yeah, tell us what's going on. What's next? Hey, so the beautiful part about my life, the fact that I have several balls in the air, I never know what's next. I just I wake up every morning with the idea that nimble and pivot are the two words that are always in my mind. Right. So I know that sounds vague, but who knows? I might wake up with a new idea tomorrow and, and be calling you because I need your help. Yeah, no, I, I, that is so good, though, because uh, we were talking about this earlier. We both have worked for big companies. Mm -hmm. And uh, I always say it's kind of like when you want to make a change in a company or a change in a culture, especially with a big organization like you used to work for or the one I used to work for, it's like the Titanic. You, just, you can't shift it quick enough to, to miss the icebergs. And so you just mentioned being able to pivot, being nimble, because in today's world, and with all the balls you got in the air, is that you need to be able to move and change and decide and make moves and change and grow and adapt and reinvent mm -hmm. at the drop of a hat, right? Mm -hmm. And so it's just kind of disappointing. We see people that just are unwilling or not open mm -hmm. and things like that. But I love that because that, if that's your mantra, for you and your family and your company is we're going to stay nimble. We're going to be ready to change and adapt and pivot. Then you're always ready for whatever happens. You know, our, our, I tell my wife all the time, my job is to fill the void, right? Mm -hmm. So we find the void, you fill the void, and you, and you never go hungry. Right. right? And I mean, spiritually, emotionally, physically, you never go hungry. So, you know, again, we found a void with basketball, so we fill that. We found a void with diversity and inclusion, we fill that. We found a void with mask, we fill that. So it's just about being nimble, staying alert, right? Mm. Staying positive and being able to move when you need to move. Right. Wow. No, that is, uh, that's admirable. I really I, I appreciate, I appreciate that. that, man. That's really, really powerful. So I'm going to touch base on that last question before yeah. we roll out. You were talking about the masks. <laughs> and uh, uh, I mean, everybody's got their own opinion on them. I, I've always just felt if I can do anything to keep my spit and my breath <laughs> off somebody else, I'm, I'm all for it. But um, plus, I've, I've been through COVID and it was an awful experience. And so when people say it's, it's not real, I would say, well, that's much BS. But anyway, yeah. nonetheless, yeah. Um, so you promote the masks. And I know they've got like the different like West, West High Bears logo mm -hmm. or Skyview Falcons logo. So how, did, how was that born? out of need, right? Yeah. So, yeah. so how it was really born was I have a couple of neighbors who had graduating seniors. Mm -hmm. And they were saying that, I don't know if you remember when they were saying they weren't gonna have people at graduation. Right. And then oh, they yeah. opened it up saying, well, you can come if you have a mask, voila. Mm -hmm. So let's provide masks for people. Uh, we did that with the idea that we do something small and you know, we've, we've, we've been really blessed in that area. Really, oh, really gosh. blessed in that no, area. I, I, I think it's awesome. And like you said, that's a, a gap, right? There was a gap. Fill the void. There was a fill the void. Yeah. No, I, I think with, uh, if I look back a year ago, like February, we, we didn't have a pandemic yet. Nope. We didn't have all the, we, when we had some social justice and social injustice issues, but they weren't to the level mm -hmm. that, that we've seen. Um, we knew that the election was on, on the horizon, but really we were kind of kind of cruising along. I thought, oh, 2020 is going to be big. It's going to be the epic year. Obviously, things changed quickly, and uh, I know some people, uh, mentally, physically, emotionally, financially, it was just it was a devastating year, or it really brought people down. How did you guys, you know, kind of just look that in the, in the eyes and say, okay, this is this is life. We've got to deal with it. Let's make 2021 better. But I mean, you have such a positive outlook on life. But you, I'm sure you had some of those conversations along the way, going. Am I going to be able to get back in the schools? Are we going to be able to have a basketball tournament? Am I going to be able to speak at TEDx? You know, those kinds of <laughs> yeah. things. I mean, those things had to have entered your mind. Yeah, absolutely. And I think, it's, I think the part that we suffer with sometimes, those are natural feelings, right? right? Anytime you got disappointment, it's okay to do a disappointment. What I always say is this, how long are you going to stay on the ground? Mm -hmm. So you got knocked down, you can choose to stay there and wallow, or you can get up and do something different. And so, you know, I've canceled three basketball camp, uh tournaments I, I lost I literally was standing in the airport when they canceled school literally standing in the airport I watched my business just trick off the board right right I'm like oh here we go but I said I told him I remember telling my daughter I got two days and I'm done with this we're gonna figure it out and we did wow yeah. just regroup rally and get going right yeah, absolutely oh absolutely my gosh, that, that is powerful that's awesome well uh so getting wrapping wrapping up mm -hmm. how do people if they want to if they want to hear more about uh, about what you're doing with regards to um, the Be Better, getting a hold of you, getting in touch with your company, what's the best way for somebody to reach out to you? Yeah, so you can reach me at BeBetterWorld.org, okay. right? Uh, Facebook page is Be Better World. Looking for a mask. The mask page is Custom Logo Mask. 
Um, my personal page, a lot of people come to that, Absolutely. William B. Henry. So, yeah, I'm a pretty easy guy to find. Oh, my gosh. That's <laughs> awesome. Well, I, I really do appreciate you. This has been a pleasure. It's, I mean, wanted to get to know you better at a deeper level. I've always admired you and had a lot of respect for what you do, but it's at a, a whole other level for me now. I, I always talk about taking your business to the next level, and you have done that in so many ways of your life. So uh, kudos to you for that. And So, anyway, hats off and really a big uh, shout-out and big ups to to William for being here. And so if you know of anybody else that's got stories of reinvention, again, of family, business, nonprofits, basketball tournaments, <laughs> uh, health, wealth, you name it, we want to bring those to light and shine the light on those and really show people that they can reinvent themselves, stay nimble, adapt, and pivot in today's world. So again, this is Leif with Reinvention with Leif, William B. Henry, signing off. Have a great week. Thanks for having me. You bet. <laughs>